So guys, I'm pretty sure we've all seen this viral video of this 6-1 point guard who goes by the name of Robert Dillingham pretty much torch and completely destroy the overtime league, embarrassing all the top players in the country on the high school level and essentially becoming an overnight star across the country. And I generally feel like every single time that I logged on to Instagram, this video was playing all over SportsCenter, ESPN. I just could not get away from this video. But guys, I feel like people generally think that this kid is strictly just he just be crossing people up. He plays for the cameras. He's flashy and whatnot. But guys, I'm here to tell you this kid is honestly a lot better than what you think. This kid, Robert Dillingham, finished as the 15th ranked player on the high school level in his 23 class, according to ESPN. He played for three different high school programs being Combine Academy. Crazy enough, also played for rapper Kanye West's Donde Academy, and he finally played for the Overtime League. Now, in late in 2021, he actually committed to play for North Carolina State, and it generally felt like this was going to be the school that we were going to be seeing Robert Dillingham play on that collegiate level but crazy enough literally only a couple months later he actually decommitted and in june of 2022 he actually finally committed to play for the kentucky wildcats and john calipari now these specific details in my opinion are very very important to this video solely due to the fact that it is only july 2023 the main college basketball season has still not yet even started and there are already questions about if this man robert dillingham made a huge mistake of playing for this man coach calipari in kentucky and people generally think this might be the star of the downfall of this man, Robert Dillingham. Now, if you want me to give you my complete, honest opinion about this decision by Robert Dillingham, I feel like we have to understand the two scopes of this decision. And I feel like people generally need to understand the main objective where this man, Robert Dillingham, is trying to get to, which is essentially the NBA. And you have to realize and understand what these NBA teams are looking, especially in a guy like a Robert Dillingham. I generally don't think people understand the two different situations going to North Carolina State and also going to Kentucky. You have to realize if this man had went to North Carolina State, he would have been the second highest recruit all time at that program. And I'm not saying that North Carolina state doesn't play team basketball or anything like that but you have to understand he would have been the second highest recruit ever in the history of the program and that team essentially would have been catered and the play style would have been surrounded by this man robert dillingham and i generally think he probably would have had the green light to shoot as many shots that he probably would desire but one thing that i do agree with is that he essentially would have been able to showcase more of his offensive ability i'm pretty sure he would average more points more minutes more stats pretty much all across the board so i will admit i do understand it from that perspective but guys like i said you have to understand what nba teams nba scouts are essentially looking for in a 6-1 type of point guard who has the body type who has the size who has a play style like this man robert dillingham i actually don't think it was a bad thing that he actually decided to go to kentucky and i genuinely believe this decision is essentially going to be the main reason why he does become a one and done player potentially for Kentucky. Guys, like I've been saying in past videos, if you're the size of a Robert Dillingham, if you're a 6'1 point guard, you're undersized, you essentially don't have that NBA size body frame, you're not the strongest player out there, there's certain things that NBA scouts just look for with the guy of this stature. They're gonna be looking at things like, can you lead on and off the court? Are you a good locker room guy? Can you motivate your teammates? Can you hit open shots when needed? Can you score the ball in different scenarios? Can you facilitate? Can you be a natural floor general? There's a lot of things that NBA teams look for in a guy like Robert Dillingham and I generally do not think people understand that not in a disrespectful way but there are so many guys like Robert Dillingham out there especially in the NBA you have to realize everybody and their mama in the NBA can score the ball I don't think you understand how many guys can score the ball super easy all across the levels all across basketball and especially at that point guard position heading into 2024 at least in my personal opinion it feels like there's so many all-star level caliber point guards in the league I mean people think guys like Tyrese Halliburton isn't a top five to ten point guard in the league you have guys like Kemba Walker who's nowhere near the NBA right now. I think he just signed a deal to play overseas somewhere. But I feel like that really tells you the talent level that the NBA has. So you have to understand it from a reality standpoint. Like I said, I'm not in no way, shape, or form or saying that Robert Dillingham can't be a starting caliber 
uh, point guard in the league, averaging 20 to 30 points a game. I'm not saying any of that, but looking at it from a realistic standpoint, there's certain qualities and a skill level that you have to have when you're of the stature of a Robert Dillingham. And that is the main reason why I personally actually like the decision for Robinham to go to Kentucky, I think it is going to set him up for success. I mean, the talent level that this team overall has, I don't think people realize Robert Dillingham is not even a top three highest rated recruit on this team. You have guys like DJ Wagner who finished, I believe, third or fourth in the country. Justin Edwards, he finished as a third player in the country. Aaron Bradshaw, top 10. And then there's the Robert Dillinghams. And then they have another guy, Reed Shepard, who's going to be playing a significant role on their team. And that's just the freshmen on this team. There's other older year players that are fairly talented as well. We know what Antonio Reeves can do. But like I said, solely due to the fact that what the talent level that this team has, the play style, the team oriented play style that this team has the main role that Robert Dillingham is essentially going to be looking to play for as well. To me, there's really no better situation that he honestly could have put himself in. And even just the past track record that this man, Coach Calipari, has being able to get his guys to the league, whether they start, whether they barely play any minutes, whether they come off the bench. I just think Robert Dillingham, there's just no other program that he essentially could have went to that would have honestly set him up better um, for the NBA. I know a lot of people are already drawing conclusions on if he did make a mistake by going to Kentucky solely due to the fact that he did struggle in the Global Jam tournament out there in Canada. And guys, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I generally feel like people are just... People just like to talk, bro. People are so delusional. People like to draw conclusions strictly after a couple of games. I mean, guys, bro, it's literally July, the summer of 2023. You watching this video, you're probably not even in school. The NFL hasn't even started. NBA Finals just got done like three, four weeks ago, bro. These players in Kentucky, they probably had like three or four practices since they all came to that program. And I'm just generally trying to understand how people can just draw some conclusions when the main season hasn't even started yet for Robert Dillingham and for Kentucky. And I generally don't like the fact that people are strictly drawing conclusions based off of four games. To read off his stats, he only averaged around five points a game, playing 16 minutes, averaging 3.5 assists. He wasn't the only player that played bad. He showed flashes of greatness. I know he had some bad moments, but guys, who on this team didn't have bad moments in this game? A lot of them look fairly young out there. A lot of them look like freshmen. A lot of them were making rookie mistakes. Robert Dillingham, he was the only guy that damn near had 10 assists in one of those games only playing 18 minutes i don't understand why people aren't talking about little things like that and i just generally think that it's just fairly too early to just draw and point fingers to saying he should transfer already he's in a bad situation he's overrated this that and the third and i think people just generally need to give him some time and i'm still a believer in robert dillingham now is robert dillingham a one and done player like I said, if he can do all the things and check all the boxes of just qualities that a player on the collegiate level and NBA level, if he can do those little things, and I generally think that he can be a one and done player. I know right now, um, Bleach Report dropped their mock draft or their big board. They have him going somewhere in the second round. I want you guys to understand that these draft boards literally mean nothing. It's literally July of 2023. The NBA draft of 2024, it's not until a whole year. We haven't seen none of these players um, even play. A lot of them are going to get drafted. A lot of them are not going to even play. A lot of them are going to get hurt. A lot of them might not even get drafted. Some of them might go lottery. Guys, this is just all strictly for conversational purposes. These mock drafts literally mean absolutely nothing. I can see Robert Dillingham being a top 30 guy um, in the next year's draft. Like I said, if he can be a consistent shooter, lead these group of guys on and off the court, make everybody's job a little bit easier on both ends of the floor. I know it's probably going to be hard, but he has to just play harder on the defensive end, play his heart out out there. And I do think he can essentially be a one and done player. Like I said, I've been a believer of this man, Robert, since day one. I love the progression that we've been seeing him over these last few years the talent level that this kid has is honestly unworldly i do think he's going to have a breakout freshman season here um, in this coming season but guys what are your expectations for rob dillingham let me know down below and i'll see you guys in the next one